All right. I'm a big fan of iced tea. Before I was a filmmaker, um, I drove for the Vans Warped Tour, and he headlined the Vans Warped Tour. I drove a big truck, and he headlined. And my friend Kevin, who runs a tour, was having a very, very bad day, and nothing was going as planned. And Ice-T kind of did his Ice-T posture, and he's like, you know, Kevin, sometimes you just got to pimp past the plan. <laughs> Keep that in mind. When I became a creatives coach before I was a filmmaker, I said this to my clients all the time. We pimp past the plan. <laughs> This is what we do as the counterculture who are bringing the status quo down in flames. We pimp past the plan. And this is because technology has moved so quickly. You know, thanks to Meet. Thank you, Meet. Technology has moved so quickly that we cannot make plans that mean anything anymore. We cannot have a goal and plan backwards. We have, to, we have to think about what's happening now and take the next step. Because there's gonna be something that happens that makes the next, that next thing obsolete. And then our plans for what? For shit. And we just don't do that anymore. Everyone that I have talked to that has a successful startup that's in the millions and billion dollar range all says the same thing. We do not have a five year plan. We're lucky to have a three month plan. Things move too fast for us to do that. So dump out anything that your career counselors have ever told you. Technology has changed that. I love this all day long, no plans, and I remain at leisure. Remember the talk before about leisure? That was, that was fantastic, it was like, I have a slide for her. But this is not true, all day long we have no plans, and although we were remaining at, remaining at leisure, we are very much in the present. And everyone will tell you you're distracted, but you're very much in the present in that distraction. This is a really smart thing that Nova Spivak said. And if you don't know who Nova Spivak is, Google that mofo. He is, uh, go. Oh, that, he didn't say that. All right. Nova Spivak is a pioneer in the semantic web. Um, and that's making the web behave like your brain. So he said it used to be that we had a goal and we planned backwards from that. Now things change so fast, we have to know where we are now and plan forwards from that. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Yes. Isn't that more interesting than how Eckhart Tolle says live in the now and has that weird little lisp? <laughs> yeah, yes. Is a German list. Yes. So, Nova. Right, we have to live in the now, and how do we do that? You know, we do that with our technology. We have to plan forward from the now, so we have to be very aware of what's happening now. Um, what's funny about Nova is he told me about a hundred times who his grandpa was, and I forget every single time. But he's very proud of him. All right, so living in the now. Here are two famous time travelers. Anyone know who these guys are? Doc Brown and Marty McFly. Doc Brown, Marty McFly. What up? Yes. What are they famous for? Traveling through time. Right in a DeLorean. Very sexy. Very sexy for the 80s, anyway. What do we have in common with them? We travel through time too. We make time. The counterculture makes time if you do not believe me. I will show you. I will show you how we make time. How much energy do you need? Oh, 1.21 gigawatts. No sound, I'm so sad. Come on, come on slide people. 1.21 gigawatts is how much energy you need to make time to cross through to the space-time continuum. Now, when I was making my film, I homeschool three children. I made the film at nap time, 1.5 hours a day. 
I sat down and edited that film. And I had to learn on the fly, because remember, I didn't know anything about making a film. So, I've got my formula right up here, if you'd like to know how to make time. Here we go. <laughs> Here's the secret time. I don't know why that did that, that's a weird thing. Um, and this is my formula, it might not work for you. My raw time was nap time. If you take out, uh, if I took out housework and errands, unsavory things. I also took out leisure, added determination, and then I also added in a, a, you know, a dash of ignorance because I knew if I knew how hard it was to actually make a film, I would never ever fucking do it. Um, and I got 1.21 gigawatts, which is needed to produce pure time. I made fucking time. And so can you. Right? That was my Tony Robbins moment. So I made time. This is something that we do very well as the counterculture making time. Because life naturally slows down when you are living in the now. This is something that I've always told my coaching clients. This is something that science has proven is that when people are in the present moment, time moves much more slowly. And what have we already learned about the counterculture? That they have to live in the present. They can no longer plan a goal way far in advance and think about the future. So all of you, are able to make time. Don't tell me you can't, don't tell me it's impossible. I know better. Who are these guys? Also two famous time travelers. Adorable, they look so young, don't they? They look so young, right? What's great about these guys is that uh, they were just hanging out, failing history class. And all of these people from all over time and the world showed up at their doorstep to help them, or they came to them, whatever. And with Bill and Ted, something that we need to understand is that because of technology, the counterculture has decided that every story is epic. I like how she mouthed the words with me. She was ready. She's already got my pentameter down. If I start spitting out poetry, I'm dead. Right? Every story is epic. Who's this guy? Gary. Who? Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. I think I heard someone say Frank Gehry. Um, Andy Warhol. You know, he said that in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. And now with the advent of social networking and the way that we can reach out to anyone and everyone, you're no longer famous for 15 minutes, but famous to 15 people on MySpace, on Flickr. On t I still have a Friendster account, people, right? I'm still on ICQ, look me up. <laughs> You're famous to 15 people. Uh, the nice thing about this is that now it is not something that your parents, you can't get famous. You can get famous, but why bother? Because you can be the catalyst for change in the world by putting a status update, by making a comment on something, by tweeting something, by putting a word on a uh, words with friends that someone finds inspiring. Everyone is now a catalyst and everyone has someone that they barely know that is a catalyst for them. So every story is epic, everything matters. I wonder if this will play. No, it's not gonna play, but, all right. So this is a beautiful, imagine, close your eyes. <laughs> And it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, study in color and flow. The last thing about being part of the counterculture, the way that technology has changed, is that we're all in perpetual beta. No longer can you stand up here and say that you are a scientist, because in a little while you're gonna be a mother, right? So no longer is she just a scientist, she's a mother, you know? I'm no longer a truck driver for the Warped Tour. I'm no longer a creatives coach. 
I am no longer just a filmmaker. Now I've spoken at Thirsty Sea, I can add that. Right? We are all in beta. Every status update, every new technology, every new way that we reach out to the world, we are changing who we are and constantly reinventing that. And we, we, we're just more creative in that regard. So, my toast to you. The killers of the status quo. That's you, the scientists, the killers, the counterculture.